Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Sunday, August 4th, 2019. My name is Rich, and sitting to my left is Vijan. How are you making it? What up, everyone? Yes! It's happening! It's finally happened. I have made it to Yay! San Diego, and I am Yay! sweating to death. He is not kidding. <laughs> It is hot here. <laughs> it is. It is. But dude, apparently it was hotter where you were at in California earlier. Yes, I was in Palm Springs. It was even hotter. It was the middle of the desert. I almost melted, but I did make it here eventually. Um, but apparently it wasn't hot enough for, for Bajan because as you can see in front of us, he decided that it wasn't enough pain. We're going to be yes doing a little tasting. So just so you guys know. Next week, we are going to have a very, very special Armchair Ninja podcast special. It's not going to be covering American Ninja Warrior, but we're going to have some fun for all of you guys here. We are going to do the Hot Ones Challenge. (gasps) Yeah, it's going to be awful. And just so you guys know, I don't do spicy stuff. I can't even do hot Cheetos. This is going to be a hot mess. I'm going to be dying. But I do it for you guys because I love you all. And to torture me. Yes. Obviously. But apparently you can you can do spiciness, I, right? I can do spiciness to a degree. I've never done the Hot Ones Challenge. And I should point out, for those of you listening at home, so it's going to sound a little off this week. We are recording. So for those that couldn't see it, we do have the uh, hot sauces in front of us. Go by our YouTube channel. You can watch this whole video uh, beginning to end. Probably less cuts than usual. Hopefully we don't mess it up too bad. We're going to do what we can to uh, to keep it smooth and... Yeah. Sound like it normally would. So if you guys are an audio listener, major apologies. It's not going to be the same audio quality that you're used to. But check out our YouTube channel and you get to see our very first ever video podcast. Yeah. We did one for episode 100, but it was kind of weird. This is <laughs> yeah. like the actual real official one. And you guys can see just how awkward we are in real life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're doing this without any cuts or anything. That's right. All live. We're doing it live. Ooh, this is going to be a hot mess, y'all. You guys do not understand how many cuts we do. <laughs> how many, like, oh, I got that wrong. Let me do this again. Yeah. Stuff like that. Oh, and you don't have the episode in front of you. This Usually, Bajan's watching it as we go through, keeping up to date. He doesn't take any notes, so we... We actually got to watch the episode together, which was really nice. It was cool to be able to sit down and watch the whole episode together. It's terrifying. This dude, like, screamed, like, three times. I'm I like, bro, you. I'm right here. <laughs> I've told you. I've told you I scream. And I'm not, like, I'm alone. I'm doing that exact same noise. I, I lose my mind watching the show. He ain't lying. I didn't see any tears this episode, but no. if we saw last week, I'm oh, sure. God. <laughs> yeah, that's, thank God they didn't do that to me this week, because that would have been embarrassing. But Oh, right. man. All right, so let's do it. Let's go through this here. We're talking Oklahoma City Finals. Yes. Uh, first off, the course, we've got two uh, new obstacles. Or one new obstacle. We only had one. Yeah. Uh, the uh, snapback. What did you think of it? It was good. Um, it was not to the degree of other penultimate obstacles, i got to say, in terms of the fact where, like, last week was just so crazy in terms of the form and the technique involved. With this, I felt very strongly right off the bat that it's going to be difficult for people. It's the first time trying, and you don't get, like, once again, that margin of error is very low. But if you get it, you've got it. Like, it's, it's te- like, physically not that taxing, but technically it's a little tricky. <sighs> I mean, we had Fallout, which is kind of similar. They had to grab from behind, but they didn't have to worry about it snapping down that way. I think it was pretty tough. I think we didn't get to see how tough it could be, maybe, but I I liked it. I thought it was a good obstacle. Yeah, I think it was fine. But I I do like the one-two punch because the crazy clocks or whatever it was called, it's just... Crazy clocks, yeah. Yeah, crazy clocks. That obstacle is dope. I remember it... Was it last year or was it another episode? Like, I... I've seen it before. It was last year. It was last year. Yeah. That thing's dope. I really like it. I really like the the muscle groups that it takes. Oh, I like this. There's vis- video stuff. All the time. <laughs> dude, all the time. I'm t- describing all these things, and I'm like doing the physicality, but I have to explain it. I'm still going to explain it for all of you audio people, but now you can see it. I mean, my awkwardness. But it uses so many different muscle groups because you start from this weird position where you're using these types of muscles right here, which um, I guess like your triceps, right? And you've got to use your your shoulder rotators to really press it together, almost like a one of those weird, like, I don't know, like inner chest muscle uh, obstacle or, you know, machines. Very, very tricky. And that incline one, ooh, 
That's no joke, bro. I was going to say, the incline really messes with you, right? Because mm-hmm. you've got to push that much harder and, and swing around a little different. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm, it's one of those things I feel like when you're doing it in real life, it's going to be a lot different than what it looks like in real, like on the TV show. Because you're, I, I have to imagine for the shorter competitors, you really have to use your wingspan of like doing some really awkward movements. Just like oh, and the crazy clocks, we did notice like when we were watching it that the middle part, I'm pretty sure that did change. From when we yes. saw it last year, right? It's got yes. like a, a weird grips that you've got to try to grab. And yeah, I think that's different than it was moving from the one set of hands to the next. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so looking at the runs that actually we had here, first on the course, we had Jeff Harris, the waste warrior in the 70s getup, has a dumpster company. It was a little iffy on it at first, but he, he kind of brought oh, it around. At the beginning, I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, it was. <laughs> <laughs> because he seems like a nice guy, kind of like shy, but he's got like he's trying to portray, portray a character, yeah. and it wasn't like that Hulk Hogan dude from yeah, like Chad the Lexington. Rest. He wasn't quite. Yeah, that I was like, Rah! like all crazy. But I gotta say, I really like the segment. Like, even though he seems like a shy guy and he's playing the character, he owns it, and he seems like genuine with his message. And I and it was just dumb enough where I got into it. Like I forgot what the kid said, but there was this kid that just said something. It was completely one note and dumb and i was like yes i am on board sometimes dumb doesn't work but i felt like i really worked this time it's funny because i get to see you watch and react to the episode live so i know you're like that's the perfect length like it was goofy and yes. and a little awkward at moments but bam short done interesting enough let's move on yeah they they didn't oversee their welcome or anything i liked it yeah um he was very smooth uh through the wing swing uh, went through the diving boards a little differently, right? He went really slow, like step by step, rather than like running across it the way most people do. I, I liked it. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, but I really appreciate this guy. He did something creative and different. And I mean, how many times have we seen a balance obstacle, like on a balance obstacle, compared to just running through it, trying to go as quickly as possible? This guy really actually showed off his balance, which uses a lot of core and legs, you know, positioning and everything. But he really knew what he was doing and went through it carefully. And honestly, that was the harder route. But for me, I found that far more impressive. Yeah, um, he almost used a little like surfboards, right? He kind of like balanced himself there, went through. It was really good. Uh, he actually made it past the crazy clocks. I thought he would actually end up going out there to kind of show them off. Uh, he missed the second snapback. He even managed to do the first one. And as I commented on the episode, I asked for a second thought, maybe he's going to beat the course. They're going to have the first time we've ever had the first person run the course and actually beat it. One day that's going to happen, but it was yeah. not going to be this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great run, though. Very good run. Yeah, that was fun. And, and I appreciate everything involved. He was fun. He had a really good message. He was playing a character, but I mean, I, I guess if you're playing a character, and we're going to talk about it later, but if you got a shtick, like... <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes, I, most of the time, I say go all the way, right? But man, I, we saw a real good example, and you guys know where I'm going with this. Where um, maybe going all the way in terms of editing is not the right idea. Um, but I put that more on editing. We'll get there. Yeah, speaking Oof. of editing, Maggie Thorne. <laughs> so. Bro, so we're already on Maggie Thorne this yeah. early in the episode. So. Why don't you go over what? Yeah, so Maggie, they show her squatting uh, with a bar. Kids are hanging from it. That's uh, no joke, by the way. They're really, really hammering home the message of her. She never quits and everything. Like her message and everything, which is good. You know, like she's she's really good. But they are hamming it up hard. I forgot. This is the one with that like really, man. The music, like they they went too far with the, with the music and everything. I'm like, guys, like. Her accolades and her talent speaks for themselves. Like, her story is amazing. What's with this, like, super cheesy, inspirational music? It was, it made me roll my eyes to a degree where my eyes almost came out of their sockets. Like, it's ridiculous. But this is Maggie Thorne. She's one of my favorite Ninja Warriors. Yeah. They were setting her up really hard to beat the warp wall. It was, like, broadcast, like... She's never made this one goal. She really wants to achieve it. She's made it so close. Which and is I th- crazy. Yeah, it, but she's, she's beat some really tough obstacles, right? She beat Crank It Up. She's done, she's done some really impressive things, but she hasn't beat the Warped Wall till now. Um, I thought, wow, Maggie Thor beats the Warped Wall, if that's what it seems to be telling us. And she's the second run of the episode. Like, what is going on in this episode for them to be yeah. showing this so early? 
Um, and it, it was broadcasting it. Uh, she was she, <laughs> despite hitting her face into the second flywheel and then falling face first onto the diving board. Um, gets a cut under her eye, bangs herself up pretty good. Um, and from what we understand, bloody nose, your bloody nose. Yeah. Um, and from what we heard afterwards, that she has a concussion or got yeah. a concussion from it. Um, but still managed to beat the wall uh, her very first time. Uh, ended up going out on the uh, crazy clocks. I'll be back. Okay. You go ahead. All right, I'm covering, I guess. So, uh, so I got a filibuster now. So Maggie Thorne, very impressive, very impressive woman. Does not need that kind of a segment. Doesn't really need all that extra bit. She's impressive on the course. We can see the determination on her face. We can see her. We can see her really churning along and do you know what he had to go get of course he had to get the bell i don't know where this is going (laughs) (laughs) so uh she had an amazing run love maggie thorne uh great that she was able to beat the warp wall finally john what did you think of her run hmm what did i think about maggie thorne's run it was awesome Maggie Thorne is one of the best ninja warriors in the world. Okay, guys? Maggie Thorne, what she did was absolutely inspirational, genuinely definition of that term. She she had a concussion. First of all, she hurt herself on, what was it, the second obstacle, bro? Yeah, third. Third obstacle. And she hit herself hard. So that might have already dazed her a little bit, dizzied her. I don't know, but that really gets you off your focus and center. We've seen just, like, banging your head a little bit. Ninja Warriors are like, oh, fall, right? I mean, let's be real. That would be me. But after that, she re, re, you know, focuses herself, goes in the next obstacle, falls, concusses herself, but continues to fight through, just like the way Maggie Thorne does. That is her story. Yeah, she does it. It's, like, kind of her shtick. But she does. She actually yeah. really does it every time. She's like John Cena, never give up. But more importantly, I mean, this might be hyperbolic, but she's like the Rambo, or not Rambo, Rambo. the Rocky, <laughs> or or the Rudy of, of Ninja Warrior, you right. know? Always getting hit, hit, hit. Like, just always hurting herself, but continuing to move forward. Nothing will ever stop her. It's amazing. And, dude, she's there, dazed, really concussed and if you guys follow any of those contact sports concussions are no joke and i genuinely hope she's okay long term and i i i hope she is i i have to imagine she is like she she was probably taking care of herself but you just don't know but she is probably in a really bad state and she fights through a balance obstacle like figuring out a way and then continues to move forward get through the warped wall that she's never done before and then do the salmon ladder like yeah. a boss, bro. Like, she is just bang, bang, bang. Like, she's got it. And then, yeah, she falls on crazy clocks, but she does not, like, just fall like that. She really fought for everything she has. Absolutely amazing. Shows all the heart. Everything that you want from an American Ninja Warrior run. Without a doubt, Maggie Thorne, you get the athletically profound run of the night. you dang right. And, dude... 100% deserved. It was so, so awesome. I can't believe I get to see the bell. I hadn't even thought to ask to see the bell till now. I get to see it. Oh, I get to hit it. <laughs> Isn't that <awesome>. wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Moving on, though. We have Rick Hinnon, uh, who has a women's clothing company. He was on Shark Tank. Uh, they had a premature baby 10 years ago and started making baby clothes and selling them online. It was kind of a... Anyway, I wasn't sure where they were going with all that, and it kind of brought it back around and made sense uh, why bring up all that. Yeah, the logo, instantly I was like, oh no, here we go. Like, I wasn't ready to hate it, but I was like, we're going to get the piano music and everything. Yeah. But as soon as I really saw where it went, I'm like, wow, this is real, bro. Yeah, like, the this Shark is Tank, some real stuff. Well, I, once I went to Shark Tank, I was like, are they just trying to, like, you know, kind of feed off of that yeah. audience? It's a big popular thing. But no, there was actually a good reason to kind of include everything they did. Yeah, so and, it and it was tragedy, and I'm really happy they're bounced back. I mean, we're talking about how, how a woman handled grief, and, and you know, and probably in stuff, stuff that happens for a lot of women, but she found a way to, you know, what was it? She knitted, like, children's socks or something like that? She started that? making children's clothes, and then she made some socks or tights or something that comes up above the boot, and yeah. they kind of caught on and... 
I mean, that's awesome, and I'm really happy for both of them. It seems like they're they're in a much better place, happy. I think they have children, right? Did we see them with children or no? Jeez, I don't know. Man, I can't remember, but I, I hope, you know, if, if they if they don't have children, I mean, hopefully they're in a place where they can try again. And, um, yeah, like, I, I didn't know where I was going, but I got to say at the end, I was really, really happy for them. Yeah. Um, so he was on the course. Had kind of an ugly run through, like, the flywheels. Like, he was not smooth. Oh, yeah. It was not going very well. Uh, but when he gets a diving board, he just bang, bang, bang. Nailed it. Just right first time. Yeah. Did that perfectly. Uh, ended up slipping off the uh, dismount, though, of the... What did I... I have slipped off the dismount. He slipped off the dismount of something. <laughs> Doing it live. Think back. Doing it live. Like, what do we have? Rich so, is not like, look, I'm not going to be the one that remembers. He fell somewhere. What I can tell you is it was kind of like shaky throughout the run, but I got to say, I was really impressed by how far he got. I, For me, it, even though this was the city like finals, so obviously this guy is legit, um, the way his run began, I was like, oh man, this is more about the story than the runner itself. You know, when we get kind yeah. of those, but I mean, he, he impressed me. Uh, speaking of impressive, we had Karsten Williams take the course yes. next. And his mother on the sidelines. God, she's fantastic. I love watching her. I wish they would focus. They kind of show her, but not really like the way they used to. Really, you kind of get a vibe for her being on the sidelines. Every once in a while, I wonder if my fiance like, <laughs> wonders if I'm like a lesser version of Karsten Williams. <laughs> I'm bald with a beard, but far less everything else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> love you, babe. He has no problems on the course. Uh, did it in four and a half minutes. 4.29 is his completion time. He was the first finisher. Very emotional at the top. Very, very overcome because... That was cool. He was stuck on the ninth obstacle, right? Year after year, he's doing fantastic. Making it to city finals. Almost beating the course. Almost beating the course. The ninth obstacle year after year. That's got to be tough to take. I mean, yeah, that... It's one of those things where you come so close. It's kind of like the story of Barclay Stockett when it comes to the uh, Vegas Finals, if you really think about it. But yeah, with him, you get so close to the to the key or whatever you want to the, the metaphor is, and he just never broke through. But now he did, and, and the elation on his face was so palpable. And you know, like I don't even know the right term, but I, I loved it, and I was so incredibly happy for him. I mean. It, moments like these where the emotion is genuine and real it, it makes it means a lot and if i was less of a jaded person i would probably <laughs> cry with them you know <laughs> but i was genuinely really happy for him you could see like year after year this guy's tried so hard and and even though every time he made it to the vegas finals i mean let's be real but this for often like a lot of ninjas they say the city finals are just as scary as the Vegas finals. Yeah. And um, for him to complete it, good on him, man. Yep. Uh, after him, we had Taylor Amon, uh, who we saw in College Ninja Warrior. Uh, very excited yeah. to see her back and doing so well. Uh, so going through the course, she had a close call on the diving moors, but she did. Able, she was able to make it through. She ended up going out in the same spot as Maggie. So, um, mm -hmm. She made it to the diving boards, or sorry, to the uh, Crazy Clocks. Did any woman make it past the crazy clocks? No. Yeah. So it was basically a race to to that obstacle. I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, yeah. there were not many competitors that made it past that obstacle. Um, but yeah, man, she is so talented. We really saw not not just her, but like this entire episode, the women came to play. I'm so incredibly impressed by the women in Oklahoma City. But man. Amon, she's just somebody that you really have to keep an eye out for. She's only 22. She's got all the background of pole vaulter. I mean, yeah. how many pole vaulter female athletes have we seen on this excelling, like Jesse Graff and everything? And she, she has a body type, like, lankier, you know, like, zero body fat. Like, man, I, the whole time I was telling you, I'm like, I just want to hand her a, a hamburger <laughs> or something, you know? But, <laughs> but that's the thing. The height, too. The height plays a big part. So a lot of the more successful women on the show... Yes have that height. Jesse Graff is 5'8", I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse Lebrack is also you know quite tall. I'm not sure where she's at in that range, but the taller women, the course is designed for someone around that height, so it kind of helps them to compete at that same level. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it shows for itself, you know. Um, I'm very, very excited to see what she has. Hey, everyone, yeah. live. Live. My neighborhood has um, <laughs> some jerks out there. All right, 
Let's, let's keep it moving. All right, moving, moving along. along. Thank you. All right, it's wonderful. Sorry about that, guys. Um, what? I, one last thing though. She's 22. I'm very curious to see, like, how, like, just her growth in like maybe two years. I can really see her being one of the very, very top female athletes. I mean, yeah, she's, we'll see this year how far she goes, but I really think we're on to something special if she really, like, just trains nonstop. American Ninja Warrior, like, give it two more years. Man, athletically, she's there. Yeah, we've been watching her since College Ninja Warrior. She went undefeated in that, absolutely crushed it. Good point. I forgot about that. Yeah, she was amazing. Um,. We had a few fast forwards next. We had Brent Stephenson, who went out on the end of Crazy Clocks, and Josh Talinas, who missed the snapback. So two top athletes end up getting fast forwarded, but it was a pretty solid episode overall, so yeah. what are you going to do? And I, I kind of feel bad for Salinas. When's the last time we actually saw him featured? It's like, he's while. always fast forwarded, and Salinas is, like, really, really good. Yeah, if you watch how he moves, he moves the same way, that same smooth fluidity that we see with Daniel Gill, with Matisse, right? He has that same comfort level maybe it's just something where he's kind of overshadowed by the bigger figures of daniel gill and matisse because but he i believe he trains with them correct me if i I'm believe wrong. so yeah he's in the same area yeah i mean it could just be i mean we remember a lot of the wolf pack ninjas you know some of them would be overshadowed quite often so it, <laughs> like it could isaac, be something. i believe originally isaac was not really featured in the earlier years that's so. a good point so maybe that'll happen for josh we'll see you just gotta win josh that's all that's go, all go ahead there. <laughs> totally easy. Uh, next on the course, uh oh. Next on the course, we have David Wright, the Cake Ninja. We want cake. All right. <clears throat> Look. He he seems like a nice guy. Like I got nothing against David Wright, but the producers, I don't know what they're doing with this guy. He should be. It, I maybe he connects with people. Maybe I'm just completely out to lunch with him. Like listeners, you let me know or watchers. It's weird. Yeah, Watch, it's viewers, watchers. whatever. Um, but this shtick just doesn't work for me. Hey, I like cake, and it's all about cake. And like we've seen things like you know the insect ninja, but like there's there's stakes involved. You know, like oh man, Akbar is gonna have to eat a tarantula or something. Like right. that's fun and everything. A guy likes cake. He hands it out to the audience, and people are just eating slices of cake. And every single... This is what made it even worse, though. It's like after every single obstacle, there would be another shot to somebody eating cake. Like, oh, this is cake. Oh, happy. I don't care. I don't care, Rich. It's stupid. It's dumb, and it's not... It's not entertaining. It's not fun. This is not, like, bike cat dude like level terrible but it's just so i it, it does not work producers please just stop with this just stop if it, like this guy should be so much more popular i felt like at this point the whole cake stick takes away from his accolades because this kid really is very very talented and if he likes cake cool like there there's better ways of implementing that than just like hammering it over your head with it well that's the thing so this kid, I mean, this guy, rookie, absolutely crushing him on the course. Has no yes. need for goofiness, silliness to, to make him interesting, right? Very personal, moves very well. Um, and look, I love cake. Everybody loves cake. I obviously love cake. But it just doesn't entertain you. It's like, I don't care. Stop showing me people eating cake. It just makes me like cake. It doesn't want me to make me like the guy anymore. I mean, at the end of the day, I should remember him for completing, I think, hitting both buzzers, right? I mean, I, did you just lose your point? He actually managed to finish the course. That's what I'm saying. He hit both buzzers. Like, yeah. he hit the, the qualifying buzzers, he and he hit the finals buzzer. Yeah. But yet, the only thing I care about is the fact that he has these terrible segments with Cake. And I feel bad about it. It does kind of make it memorable in a way, because you're, like, rant about it. It's like, it's like the left-right double-double guy, right? It's like, it's hard to forget that guy, because he just drives you nuts. I mean, I guess you're right. It's that always that argument of, is, was it, bad news? Oh, or, yeah, or, or like, whatever it is. bad publicity. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's that. I don't know, but I didn't care for it. Yeah. Once again, maybe I'm out to lunch. You guys let me know. I, I don't hate the guy. I got to make that clear. Right. But I really think there's a better way of making him popular. I mean, think about it, like we have a rookie who hits both 
qualifiers and city finals buzzer. That's a ama- that's really really that's legit. rare and very legit. And he was very smooth on the course, despite kicking the middle board or the crazy clock. He was still able to catch it and make it through. Yeah. Um, so great, great ninja. I hope he does well in Vegas. And I remember in his in his cake little thingy whatever vignette. He was actually very personable. Like yeah, he was, was the other thing he was too. not awkward in front of the camera. He was actually entertaining. Yeah, if you're so, using that to boost him up in some way, where it's like, okay, he doesn't have much camera presence. Let's give him something yeah. to keep him memorable. But he was fine. He was perfectly fine. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but someone who doesn't need that and who doesn't have some weird little shtick, we've got Karen Wilton take the course. Uh, this was legit. She is amazing. We remember her well from last year because she was very impressive last year in the qualifiers. Um, they kind of flash back to that a bit. It's like, okay, she did well in the qualifiers last year, but fell in the first obstacle in the finals. Yeah. Is that going to happen again? It was kind of the question. She uh, she manages to beat the coconut climb where she fell on uh, in qualifiers this time, making her the third woman we saw in this episode to make it up the warped wall. Um, did you think she was going to get up it? She was struggling. She was struggling a little bit, you know, missed it the first time. The second time, I kind of thought she was done. I was, like, hopeful, but it seemed unlikely that she was going to get it. Um, yeah, she got it on the third attempt, and a little happy. I was a little happy Yeah, <laughs> I, w- I was really, really excited for her. I mean, how often do we really see a Ninja Warrior, like, complete the Warped Wall on the third try? It's rare. And I'm really happy that she just stayed calm, stayed focused, and really went for it. And she got it, man. She and did. She, you could see she was so happy. And her family was happy. And um, I, I wonder if she's the oldest female athlete to complete the Warped Wall. At 41, um, you guys, be, right? Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe there's somebody worth forgetting. But, I mean, she's got to be one of the oldest. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way. That's, that's something she should be really proud of. And, um, yeah, I, if, if that is true, she needs to own it. Well, yeah. I guess next up is for her to just hit a buzzer, right? No, she yeah. didn't hit a buzzer. No, she, she didn't. didn't. She, she didn't, didn't hit a buzzer. No. Oh. Well, that's the next goal. <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. Um, she ended up missing the salmon ladder completely, though, so she hit the trampoline and just whiffed on the... I, I love how they're like, let's see how much she has left, and she had <laughs> nothing left. She, she she might as well have just, like, just jumped in the water. It was like, boink. Like, it was... <laughs> there was an attempt for it, but it was... <laughs> Yeah, she was done. Man, that, I, I don't blame her, though. I mean, warped wall three times in a row, you're really wearing yourself out, your legs. Uh, after her, we had Jody Avila, the big dog. And he looks huge. He's six foot six, 220 pounds. Very, very big guy. Dude, like, this guy on the course, <laughs> just, yeah. he towers over it. Yeah, there's parts where, he, like, if he puts his feet down, is he going to hit the water, right? Like, he's yeah. going to, like, keep his legs up at all times. Uh, very, very uh, good ninja, though. Mm-hmm. In spite of his size, he moves very fluidly. He was able to beat the crazy clocks and the snapback uh, and just barely beat David Wright's time. That's the cake ninja. He just beat him out for uh, to make his first city finals better. The first time Jody Villa has been able to beat a city finals course. That's awesome, man. Um, big, lanky dudes doing well this course. Yeah. Shout out nice. to uh, Darker, Bald... I don't know if he's bearded, but, you know, bearded, handsome. Yeah. But, gotta say, very, very happy for him. Um, his family, I'm, I think, might have been even more happier <laughs> than he was. I mean, his family was so cute. They were losing their mind. And, once again, shout out to his son. That kid is going places in terms of personality. I really look forward to seeing his son on a Jr. Yeah, in the qualifiers, we got to see them training together and his son beating him at stuff. It was really good. Yeah, so much personality. I love it. Uh, we had a fast forward next of Jonathan Horton, uh, the former Olympic gymnast, fell on the salmon ladder trying to skip yeah. a run. That sucks, man. Um, he he didn't compete last year, correct? I think it was last year he missed for did he do deployment? Was it? I think it was something, and I believe you're right that it was deployment. Um, yeah, it, it sucks that we see him like saw him in a flash forward, but I understand why due to the fact that he fell in this manner. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's funny that right after him, he is five foot one, I believe, and right after him, we cut back to Barclay Stockett, the five yes. foot wonder, uh, who oh, she's Barclay. the best man. <laughs> we both gushed all over her as soon as she showed up on the screen. Very, very excited to see her again. She's been building obstacle courses in Africa and helping them. Um, former child soldiers, like yeah, she just 
like she's got to be a top ninja, amazing athlete. And do all this good work. Like she's everything the show could possibly want in a, in a competitor. Yeah, I didn't know that she's she's um, for this nonprofit organization that really helps out. You know, I believe it's former child soldiers. Is that correct? In yeah, Africa? I believe so. That that's amazing, and that's some real work. And like, um, I don't know. I don't know if they said the entire village, like all these kids in the in the video, were former child soldiers. But if that's the case, that's a lot, and you can really see just the happiness that. You know, her and the rest of the organization provide for that village. And I was very, very happy for them. It was just a really feel-good, like, video and everything that she's doing. I mean, it's one of those things where it involves American Ninja Warrior, right? For it to be there. But there was so much more profound things involved with it. And for me, easily the visually profound video of the night. He loves it. I gotta do it. For I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, so yes, amazing, amazing segment. And then we get to see her run, and I was a little worried. I was, I was looking at the way she was going, and it was like we've got three women that have beat the warp wall this episode. She's got to get to the crazy clocks in a decent time. Can she do it? Um, which she was, thankfully, able to make it there uh, in a good time. She fell in the second crazy clock hands, um, but. Uh, amazing that is the fourth woman in this episode to make it up the warped wall that is yeah. our new record for the show and that's amazing i mean once again okc okc yeah i think that's it yeah. um showing off the female talent so well um i, I guess a new fantastic four in a way kind of um they were kind of hinting at it. they're going like this i'm like <laughs> yeah. all right let's let's calm down people um but they earned it and i was really happy for all the female athletes involved i mean think about how far some of them went and still didn't make it. You know, yeah. that sucks, but at the same time, they should all be really be proud of themselves. I mean, there's no way I or many athletes could ever get that far on the course, obviously, because they didn't. And um, yeah, just for Barclay Socket in general, she really looked, or she looked very poised. I mean, once again, she always looks so strong. Those biceps are crazy. I mean, go Barclay. I need to get on your training regimen. Those are no joke. Um, but she 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 fell on, what was it, that jungle tree thingy majigger, what's it called? The coconut climb. Coconut climb. Fire, yeah. yeah, but she she looked great um, going through it this time. Yeah. What and, you, so what changed? This is what's bugging me with this episode. The coconut climb, do you think they oh. just got that much better? Or did they change up the obstacle? Is there some they do that sometimes, right? They nerf the obstacle yeah. in some way. Well, they could have done... I, I'd have to look back at the first episode to really tell, but I know they they had these little, like, placement brackets, like these safety brackets. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's what it was, because I know once you get up to the top, it's kind of just locked in place, but the fight was always getting there, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's the difference. But what I do know is oftentimes on the, the next day, for a lot of these newer obstacles, the ninjas have time to actually figure out the technique involved. So it could just be the approach. All the ninjas know now what to do. I mean, they, they have a full day of just talking and just looking at it and being like, all right, we see what didn't work and we see what worked for these ninjas. Let's adapt that. So it could be simply that. I just don't know. All right. Uh, we next had a fast forward of Abel Gonzalez who went out on the crazy clocks dismount mm -hmm. um, before we came back to... Matthew Day, who had the second fastest time in qualifying, absolutely crushing it on the course, super speedy guy, and then overshot the downside of the coconut climb, just went right off the end of it, fell all the way down to the bottom, and darn near gave me a heart attack. Yeah. Rich screamed. It was, <laughs> it was insane. But I don't blame him. That was terrifying. Not just that. This poor guy, he's going to be hurting so bad the next day. Because this guy, he didn't just fall into the water. Right. Which might have been not the better thing to do, but better for his lower back. Because he caught himself at the very end. All of that gravity, force, weight, momentum, every term involved. He caught himself with it. And in his positioning and everything, all of that force goes straight to your lower spine. And, dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> that, ooh. I, I felt for him. That... He's going to be hurting so bad. Hopefully he didn't have a lot of damage there because when you think about it, your lower spine is not a, a place where you want all that force hitting. I mean, yeah. it's just not that much protection. You can only have so much core strength there. Um, 
but he he did everything he can he could in the, in that moment so i i feel for the guy because he showed so much promise and fell that way it sucks it was similar to uh drew dreschel on the wing nuts where it's just he was too good he overshot it that's yeah, just what good, happened good comparison uh yeah matthew day will be back um but not this year unfortunately he does not go to vegas that was uh, too early in the uh, too early on the course unfortunately that sucks man yeah so out of two people to go we got two. daniel gill and matisse kidawadi shocker yeah they, they <laughs> saved them for the last for some reason i can't imagine yeah. why were you surprised that they sh- that they had matisse run last rather than daniel yes very very i didn't know if they just wanted to mix it up i thought it made sense to always have the speed pass holder go uh, last 100% cosine that's what I thought they were going to do and it makes sense in a way um, that way you're not reading too much into the edit and I don't I don't think I like I didn't read too much in the edit I hope you didn't either no because but... it could have gone either way it very would have it would have made sense if he fell early to have him go last too right so either way that would have been fine so I I don't think that like I don't feel this way but I worry do you think Matisse is going to eventually get some blowback getting that Casey Cananzaro type of um i guess not necessarily hate but like annoyance from the fans of always being on camera he was shown so much last year and now he's like the last run of this year once again i don't mind it yet he's entertaining he's a good person and all that but i worry because i thought the same thing for casey Kanzar where i didn't have any problems with her but there was so much like just vitriol online well i think the problem with casey she did something amazing. She did something no one's been able to, no woman's been able to accomplish since, even the great Jesse Graf. She finished both the qualifying and the city finals course. And then she kind of struggled after that, right? And I think it's, if she had continued that level of competition, if she had kept being that top competitor, she wouldn't have got the blowback. And I'm not saying anything against her. She was one of the best women in the sport, still is if she wanted to keep doing it. Yeah. But Matisse is proving himself to compete at that level. He just, I mean, spoilers for the end of this, but he manages to beat Daniel Gill in the Power Tower, which neither one of us really gave him the credit. We thought maybe he definitely had a chance, but I think most people's money was on Daniel Gill to take it home. Yeah, um, 100%. I, I would have bet some big money that Daniel Gill is going to win. And it's nothing against Matisse, but it's just we've seen Daniel Gill be so technical and proficient throughout everything. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know about you, I have nothing really to say about Daniel Gill's run because it was just perfect. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's... <laughs> hey, he did well. He was... What, what do you say like to a run like that, dude? It's just like, uh, if you want to write a textbook on how to run a Ninja Warrior course, just watch that run and write down everything you did. Yeah. I mean, I, I have nothing else to say. Yeah. Really good job, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, he was under a minute to the wall. Absolutely safe and perfect the whole way. Three minute, 34 seconds. The fastest time. Matisse comes behind him. Very smooth all the way as well. Going uh, a little bit slower, though. He, he had slower. a little bit of a slower approach taking his time. Don't have any problems with that. Right. He wasn't safe. He couldn't fall. He had to complete it if he wanted to go to the Good point, right? yeah. So that's the thing. Daniel, again, proves the same way that uh drew did that give them that safety net and they can just blow through this these courses very true um but matisse did fantastic and less than half a second he beat karsten williams time up the the uh the final obstacle fantastic run i was losing my mind up that (laughs) he was going like i don't blame him like you know we're not there he was probably worn like drawn out or thing but he was like walking to the spider climb and i'm like all right get your time like breath or whatever but like come on bro you're getting close like i'm looking at a clock Just, and then he gets off the, the spider climb at the very end <laughs> yeah. and kind of just like slumps over. I'm like, hit the buzzer! Hit it! Hit it! <laughs> it's like, what did you say, a second? Half, less than half a second. Half a second. Could you imagine if he did all of that and like got a half a second late? That would have been the worst. It would have kind of bettered it. Like, it would have been entertaining. They're like, oh my God. Because then you, I kind of trust once he's safe, once he's to that final obstacle and at the time's ticking, it's like, I. I feel very confident he's got it at that point. I mean, like, if he yeah. had missed it by a second or two, I feel like they wouldn't have shown it last. Very true. I mean, I, I don't blame you. 
Uh, but I'm very glad he did because I really wanted to see the showdown that they were amping up this entire episode. Yes, the power tower between Matisse and Daniel. Heck yeah, bro. Let's go. Uh, they... I mean, I don't have a lot of notes. The power tower doesn't lend itself great to a lot of discussion. It's just like, they get on it, they go as fast as they can, and Matisse was faster. I was like, what are you going to say about that? I mean, you're right. Now I think about it. Um, the newer power tower yeah. finals, whatever you call it, um, that one isn't... I think it's because it goes by so quickly, and just the the way it's formatted, like the camera angles can't get it the right way. Right. In terms of just like the visual aesthetic, being like, oh, they're on this, oh, they're on this. It's kind of like just like a jumble mess of like body parts flying throughout the and stuff. Sw- yeah, you without don't... context, let, let's. Let, <laughs> but anyways, um, what I will say is. I was stunned. Like I, I felt going in. We were talking about it. Matisse has the the wingspan, yes. you know, um, advantage. But we both agree that Daniel Gill is probably the the one that's more likely to get it because he's so quick and proficient. Yeah. But I was really impressed by Matisse. He very much was focused, and he went one after the other. He really didn't use his arm length um, to his advantage. Maybe he did. I, I just have to watch back. But it looks like he was just really focused on getting one after the other without much middle ground. Yeah, yeah. He just... Uh, and according to Daniel at the end of it, when they had the the interview with them, they tend to go back and forth anyway. It's like a 50-50 yeah. shot on who's going to win. This time, Matisse came out ahead. Maybe next time it'll be Daniel. Yeah. That, right. was, that was awesome, though, man. I, I was excited for the run. Like, every... There was drama on this on this episode. There was some low lights, but it wasn't it wasn't as bad as before. And um, I wouldn't say my favorite episode of the season, but it was very very good. All right, there was one ninja when I looked through who actually competed that got skipped that I was surprised that they skipped. Huh. Tremaine Dorch. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird that they would skip him. He's like. They showed him off, and like they really kind of skipped him in qualifiers, if I remember, too. Uh, very high likely uh, candidate for the Invisible Ninja Award this year. Yeah. Because I mean, they means... showed him in like the little segments. You know what I mean? Like they do the flash war. Like, coming up in this episode, some of your favorite ninjas. And then they show him, and they show off the abs. And then they never show his run through the whole thing. <laughs> That's strange. I mean, he's really good. Very athletic. Do you know how far he went? Uh, he made it to Crazy Clocks. I mean, he did about as far as everybody else. Did he make it through? I think he did. I really should have checked that. I don't know. I'm not checking right now. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but really happy for him. Um, I mean, I don't want to be controversial, but maybe that was too many, uh, you know, people that may look like me, but more handsome and taller <laughs> and buffer. <laughs> all right. Uh, I could say that. Kind of. Yes, you could say that. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> But let's be real. Maybe it was that. I don't know. All right, so uh, we do not know. We're not going to check the five-star reviews this week. We will do that again next week. You all get a five-star review this week. I yeah, love you right. all. All the love from San Diego. Uh, but How cringe was that? <laughs> it is what it is. I think, you know what? This has proved to me that we really need to button it up for every other episode. We can do this live. We can do it in one take. I'm very proud of us. Yeah, dude, for real. Um, <laughs> y'all don't realize how many, like, <laughs> cuts we make. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I gotta say, I did quite well, and I'm proud of myself. You usually don't screw up as much as I do, <laughs> but, yes. hey, we made it through, bro. Yes, thank you very much for this week, and thank you for hosting me in, in lovely San Diego. Uh, we have another video to come. Make sure you come oh, and stop man. by, check out the torture we are going to be putting ourselves through if you'd like to reach out to us you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com i am at ninjapodcast on both instagram and twitter Bijan, how can they reach you hit me up at twitter and instagram at bijan 151 that is b-i-j-a-n 151 all right thank you all so much for listening and have a wonderful week peace love and deuces y'all